Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure vehicle review. Today, we're going to look at the McFarlane DC Multiverse Batman Forever Bountmobile. Not only that, but this is the gold label Amazon exclusive Glow in the Dark Edition. I pre ordered this from, you guessed it, Amazon, and for once, one of the McFarlane releases was not delayed. So let's take a look at the packaging. As you can see, part of the Gold Label collection. A Gold Label figure is simply a retailer exclusive. Whether it be Target or Walmart, this Gold Label is an Amazon exclusive. Batman Forever, DC Multiverse, Batmobile. Glow in the Dark Edition. Here are the measurements. And here's the car at the front looking really cool, glowing in green. Green was a huge theme for Batman Forever, so very appropriate for this car. Here's the top of the box. Pretty much the same thing, just a little bit larger picture. Here's the back of the box. You can see a figure fits inside. There's a Batmobile, and it glows in the dark. On the bottom, there is the barcode, if that helps anybody. So with no further ado, let's open it up. And of course, I did get two of these Batmobiles, one of which to open and enjoy, the other one to keep unopened in my complete Batman and related unopened action figure collection. Here's the Amazon exclusive Golden Dark Batmobile at the bottom next to the wide release at the top that has lights, sounds, and Alfred. All right, now they have this vehicle out of the package. Here it is with all the accessories laid out. They're not exactly accessories, but we have the removal fins. So this is the Batman Forever Batmobile. Deja vu, feels like I just did this a couple months ago. And I kinda did. Let's go ahead and start off by putting the fins on and getting this thing whole and complete. And so bam, here it is, the Batman Forever Batmobile. It's sleek gorgeous, it's giant, super long. It's not perfect, but it's a very nice vehicle. Let's take a closer look. So at the front here, have that kind of interesting pattern. Kind of remember it lighting up the movie, but I could be wrong. Some headlights at the front here, kind of bland, totally in black. You can see this is going to be where all the glow-in-the-dark stuff is. Going to charge that up, and bam, should be glowing. Probably that stuff as well. Got the Batman hubcaps, and they look like they probably glow in the dark too. The wheels are actually rubber. They spin independently of one another, both different sides. Same with the back. Then we have the exhaust. Bottom of the car, decent amount of detail. And then the top. You have a little button here, you press it. Pops the canopy open, exposing the seat inside, which has nice detailing as well. In Batman Forever, it's a continuation of Batman Returns, but they've completely changed a lot of the things the way they look. One could argue the Batman 89 Batmobile was sort of destroyed in Batman Returns when he did the Bat Missile thing. Either way, it's a pretty nice looking car. Now, my biggest complaint is going to be. It's a one-seater. In the movie, it was a two-seater. They never ever actually had two people in the car, but there was a second seat there. And that's something like McFarland seems to do often. 1990 Batmobile, the White Knight Batmobile, and the Batman Forever Batmobile all really should be two-seaters. And I get it's very hard to accommodate with these large seven-inch figures. You'd have to make the vehicles even bigger, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I love vehicles for what they are. I love the fact that they fit the figures, but I do wish they could fit two figures. That would be awesome. But I also understand it'd be bigger, more expensive. There, there's a lot of reasons behind the scene. Beyond that, I don't have too many complaints. The vehicle looks good. It looks sleek. It looks very movie accurate. Not perfect, but not that far either. Here's a look at the inside of the cockpit, the seat, the sides. Pretty bland. And then here's the dash and the controls, and it looks fantastic. They did a really nice job on this part, even though most of it is just stickers. Now let's look at the measurements of this thing. It is very long, especially with the fin attached. With the fin, all the way, it's about 31, maybe a little bit longer. Without the fin, about 23 inches long, as far as how tall it is. Once again, without the fin, about 6 inches tall. And how wide it is, about 8 inches wide. And then to look at the action features, 
It doesn't have a lot of action features, but it has some cool stuff. First of all, the wheels spin, and all four of them spin independently of one another. Second of all, you can open the canopy, and actually put your figure inside. And third of all, the glow of the dark features, which is probably the coolest aspect of this car. Eager to check that out. So here's a Batmobile charged up in a fully lit room with a glow in the dark. Then in a semi lit room with a glow in the dark. And in a completely dark room, I must say, not super impressed. Charge that thing for a long time with the black light. Glow in the dark's not the same as when I was a kid. When I was a kid, just left in a room, and it glows in the dark. Now you have to charge it with black light. And it looks decent in person, but not nearly as impressive as I would have expected. Here it is again. I just hit it up with the black light again, charge it up. Like I said, it does look good, but the actual light up one is just so much brighter. It makes this one seem, what's the point? Might as well just make it regular without glow in the dark or lights or anything. Now to check out the differences between these two cars. Here's the new Amazon exclusive glow in the dark version, and here's the original with lights and sounds. And honestly, they look exactly the same. Hubcaps, the front with sort of a plastic key, green behind it. Hubcaps, I mean, it literally looks exactly the same. I think it is exactly the same. The only difference is they casted this with sort of a glow in the dark material. Here's a look at McFarland's Val Kilmer Batman inside this Batmobile. His legs got kind of snagged a little bit, but once you get him in there, he fits no problem. Very spacious on the sides, the top. Complete clearance. And we'll check it out with numerous other Batman figures, both from McFarlane and different companies at the end of the video. Here's a look at Batman and Robin in the Batcave with the Batmobile glowing in the dark behind them. Here's a look at Batman and Robin in the Batcave. Alfred is serving them tea. Get ready to take the Batmobile out to the Gotham City streets. Alfred says, Could I offer you a sandwich, sir? Batman replies with, I'll get drive through. Here's a look at the Batmobile leaving Arkham Asylum. Here it is in the Gotham City streets. In a high pursuit chase, you can see some GCPD SWAT fans in front of it. Here's a part kind of like the end of the movie. Riddler's in the Batcave. He's using his cane to manipulate the Batcomputer, and then it deploys the Batmobile. Riddler pulls out one of his little bat bombs and says, You know, it's always risky introducing a tamed animal back into the wild. They sometimes have trouble adapting to their new environment, throws it in and destroys the Batmobile, and then proceeds to destroy the bat computer and all the different bat suits. Here's the McFarland Batman Forever Batmobile, next to the old Kenner version. This was for, I don't know, four and a half, maybe five inch scale figures. It is also a one seater. I think it also had light up features, but it has some proper fins in the back where it can split the two or be one. It's a lot smaller. We've gotten a huge upgrade here. Here are the cars, both from the front. Now let's check it out. Next is with our vehicles, starting off with the Kenner Batman Forever Batmobile. And here it is, next to the Kenner Batman Forever Batwing, Batmobile, and Batboat. I wonder if these vehicle sales continue to do good. Maybe McFarlane will give us the Batwing and Batboat for this movie. And here it is, next to McFarlane's 1989 Michael Keaton Batmobile. We have Michael Keaton version, the Val Kilmer version, I imagine they'll give us the George Clooney version in the near future. We have the Dark Knight one already, so hopefully they'll give us Batman vs Superman Batmobile, Robert Pattinson's Batmobile, and a larger multiverse version of the Adam West Batmobile. Of course, they made two versions of this Batmobile, a glossy one from the Flash movie, and a flat matte one from the 89 movie. Here it is, next to the Tumblr, the Batmobile from the Dark Knight trilogy. And they also made two variations of this Batmobile. The black one that Batman used, and the camo one that Bane used for the Dark Knight Rises. I got three of the camo tumblers to army build for my Bane mercenaries. Here it is, next to the White Knight Batmobile. The first of what I hope is many different comic Batmobiles. Then, next to McFarlane's recent DC Direct Batmobile and Jokermobile from Batman the Animated Series. And now, with the McFarlane Batman Classic TV Series and the Mattel Batmobile, McFarland on the left, Mattel on the right. Mattel is far superior, and hopefully McFarland gives us a multiverse version. Here it is, next to the Mattel Hot Wheels 7-inch scale Robert Pattinson Batmobile. 
Then, with the Mattel DC Multiverse, Justice League Batmobile, this is not the ultimate radio controlled version. And now, next to an older Mattel 2005 comic Batmobile. And finally, here it is next to a Mattel Wrestling Lucha Lowrider vehicle. Here is McFarlane's entire Batman Forever collection. We have the Batman Forever Wave, Robin, Batman, Two Face, and the Riddler, collect to build the Nightmare Bat. Then we have the Batman Forever Batman that came in the Ultimate Movie Six Pack. And of course, now the Batmobile Alfred to add to the collection. I really hope they give us Val Kilmer his Panther suit. And they could also give us Riddler in a couple different looks. Now we're to check out some Batman figures from different various companies and see which ones will fit inside this Batmobile. And I'm guessing they all will. But first, let's check out several different McFarlane Batman figures. We already saw the Val Kilmer fits in there just fine. So let's check out these other ones. We have the 89 movie Batman and also the Ben Affleck Batman, and then the Nightfall Batman, and the large Hush Batman. Here's Michael Keaton, 1989 Batman in the cockpit. And then the Batman vs Superman, Ben Affleck Batman. He has a wider stance. Gotta get his legs right into the right spot, and once you do, they'll fit right in there. Here's the Nightfall Batman driving this Batmobile, and even with his rubber cape, as long as you guide his feet, fits in just fine. Here's the Hush Batman, one of McFarlane's largest Batman figures, and he's a big wide rubber cape. Kind of mess around a little bit, once again fits in no problem. Here's a DC Direct DC Essentials Batman, even with his plastic cape, no problem. And then NECA's comic Batman figure, Here's a Mezco 112 Collective Batman figure. Next, with a Mattel DC Universe Classics Batman, and even with this plastic cape. And now, here's a Mayfex Batman figure in the Batmobile. And finally, with a smaller SH figure, it's Batman. So overall, it is a fantastic Batmobile as far as the actual vehicle. Yes, I'm disappointed in actually two things on this car. Well, I guess three. Number one, the fact that it's a one-seater, not a two-seater. Number two, I do wish that it had the back long fin, was able to split into two fins, because that is a feature in the movie. And even the old counter one could do that. That really would not have been that hard for them to orchestrate, or that expensive. And number three, the glow-in-the-dark feature. It's just not as impressive as I expected. Honestly, they might as well not even include it. It's a pain in the ass to charge it up. It doesn't last that long. It looks cool, sure, but like I said, it's not nearly as bright as I expected. It doesn't last that long. It takes a while to charge up, and it doesn't just charge up by being a regular lit room. So, my advice would be, if you just want the car, and you don't care about the lights, the sounds, you don't care about Alfred, then get this one. But the glow in the dark feature is disappointing. I wouldn't really expect anything special there. If you want Alfred, and you want the extra features, definitely get the other version. I would highly recommend it over this one. Personally, I really wanted Alfred, even though he has his problems as well. Not accurate suit, etc., etc. The lights are very impressive on the other one. So are the sounds. Beyond that, the cars are identical, exactly the same, and I think that's only like $20 more than this one. I was hoping it would look a little bit more different. Now, the other one has more blue glow to it, and this one has more green glow to it. So from that point of view, maybe it's a little more movie accurate. But the green glow is just kind of weak on this one. I don't remember what I rated the original one. If I say I rated an 8, which seems about right because it's gorgeous, I'll probably give this one a 7. It still looks exactly the same, just the action features are significantly inferior, and that's why it costs less. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press the like below. If you have anything you want to save the video, Add to the comment section, and if you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you for watching this video, and I will talk to you guys real soon.